Hi everyone, welcome to Power Your Job Search with Google Tools, a workshop created by Grow with Google and presented by Alamance County Public Libraries. Grow with Google helps people grow their skills, careers, and businesses by offering free digital skills, training, and tools. And we here at ACPL like to do the same. I'll start by introducing myself. My name is Donovan, and I work in the Reference Department at May Memorial Library. Thank you for checking out my little video today. We hope that you learn a thing or two as I show you how Google Tools can make your job search easier and more efficient. Don't forget to post and share this on social media using hashtag GrowWithGoogle. And if you're feeling generous, linking people to our website, alamancelibraries.org, or one of our social media pages goes a long way in helping us reach the community with more free resources just like this one. Our links will be in the description of this video. Now let's get started. Many people are launching a new job search from home, so let's start by acknowledging some of the challenges to finding new opportunities from a remote location. Then we'll share some tips that can make it easier for you to work from home and maximize your career potential. As I mentioned, finding a new job can be difficult even under the best circumstances. Running a new career search while transitioning to working from home can be even more challenging. For example, you may not hear about as many opportunities through word of mouth as you would in a shared office space. Staying on top of a job search can be even more challenging if you're also managing child care, domestic work, and new living arrangements. Today's workshop will show you how to use Google Tools to manage some of these challenges. Before we dive in, let's talk about some best practices for running a job search from home. First, create or keep a routine. If you'd normally take a shower and have breakfast before work, keep doing that. Maintain regular hours, set a schedule, and try to keep it. A routine will help you maintain a sense of normalcy and stay productive. Treat your job searching as a job itself. Create a dedicated workspace, find a spot to go to work in the same place every day. If you don't have the luxury of a dedicated office space at home, at least work in the same seat at a table every day, even if you have to clean it up at dinner time. Take lunch and breaks. Make sure that you add them to your schedule. It can be easy to forget breaks when you're working from home. Also, don't sit in front of your computer for solid eight hours. Every hour or so, give your body and your eyes a break by standing up and walking around. Gather the tools that you need to be productive. You may find that you need office supplies that used to be provided by your workplace. Make a list of these supplies that you use in a normal work day and take the time to purchase them for your home office. Create a daily to-do list. At the end of your workday, write the next day's to-do list. This will help keep you from popping back to your computer after your work hours to complete just one more task. And this will also help you get to your next morning off work, off to a strong start. Most importantly, when your work day is done, close up shop. Remember, if you're not at work, don't spend time working. These are just a few strategies for making your job search at home, whether you're looking for full-time or managing your current job, while searching for your next opportunity. In this workshop, I'll demonstrate how to manage the main tasks of a job search. First, we'll create a job search tracker in Google Sheets. Use Sheets to keep track of the jobs that you want to apply for. The sheet will allow you to organize any information you find on jobs, and you can return to it when you're ready to prepare and submit applications. A sheet helps you remember the jobs you're interested in, and allows you to compare them to decide which one is the best for you. Once you've built your sheets tracker to manage this whole process, I'll show you how to use jobs on Google Search to find more jobs that are relevant to you. I'll show you how to search and filter for jobs that match your interests and experience, how to save the jobs you like, and how to get alerts when new jobs are posted. Finally, we'll discuss the next phase. Next, we'll briefly talk about how to create a resume with a simple, easy to use template in Google Docs. I'll explain some best practices. Finally, we'll discuss the next phase of your job search, the interview. More and more jobs are transitioning to online interviews using Google conferencing platforms like Google Meet. I'll walk you through some strategies to help you ace your digital interviews. The skills you learn in this workshop will help you during your job search and help you once you're settled into a new role. Many jobs today require familiarity with technology like word processing and spreadsheets. 
so digital skills are more important now than ever. As I talk about these features of G Suite applications, feel free to experiment on your own device or follow along with my demonstrations. Remember, this isn't a live video, so you can pause it or rewatch sections of it whenever you feel the need to. Let's get started. When you begin looking for a job, you might start by visiting a company's webpage and reading a job description. That can be a great way to get ideas about possible career options. But once you start collecting information about potential opportunities, you might find that it can be hard to keep all your options straight. Lots of people find it easier to search for jobs and apply for them in separate waves. You might do a lot of searching online for jobs on one day while planning to apply for those jobs on a different day. But it's easy to forget about different jobs you found or lose a sense of urgency about them after your initial search. Plus, job openings are posted and removed all the time, so it can be difficult to keep up with them. To help you find opportunities and keep them organized, we're going to start by building a basic tracker in Google Sheets. This tracker will help you manage the job search process from start to finish. To create your job search tracker, you'll need to first sign into your Google account. If you don't have one already, you can always create a free Google account. It's free for life, don't worry. Open a new tab in your browser and go to google.com. If you're not signed in, click sign in and enter your username and password. Signing into your Google account allows you to access lots of Google apps that you can use for work and for home. If you don't have one already, you can always create a free Google account by clicking the Create Account button, which brings you to your account creation page. And it's free for life, like I said, so nothing to lose by creating yourself a Gmail account. After you've signed into your Google account, use the Google Apps menu to move between applications. It's up here at the top right. These are all the Google applications that come with your account. Your most recently used apps are shown first. Let's go take a look at Google Drive first. It's got this triangle symbol and it's called Drive. So let's click on that. Google Drive allows you to store, access, and share files like documents, slideshows, forms, and photos in one place. Instead of storing them on one computer, your Google Drive files are stored in the cloud a safe place on the internet where you can save important information. When you save something on your Google Drive, you can easily access it from any computer, smartphone, or tablet with internet access. Files stored on Google Drive won't get lost, even if your computer crashes. And the projects you create with Google applications are all stored automatically on your Google Drive. You don't have to remember to click Save. You can create new projects from your Google Drive. To create a new tracker for your job search, Create a new Google Sheet. To do that, we're going to click New over here on the far top left of your Google Drive page. And then we're going to click Google Sheets. Next, we're going to rename our sheets. It starts off with the default name of Untitled Spreadsheet at the very top of the page up here. But if you click on that, you can type here and name it whatever you want. We're going to go with my job search and then you can click off of it and whenever Google Drive is saving a change it tells you up here at the very top right and this little bitty checkbox means it's been saved successfully to the cloud as soon as you open the sheet it is saved automatically on your Google Drive you do not have to do anything extra to save your projects they save automatically whenever you make changes to them. Now take a look at this spreadsheet. A spreadsheet contains many rectangles called cells. Cells are organized into rows, which have numbers, and columns, which have letters. Every cell has an address based on its column and row. For example, this cell is called A1 because it is in column A, and row 1. So it is A1. This would be B2. This would be C3, D4, E4, F4, F5, for example. 
You can navigate the spreadsheet by clicking in different cells, or you can use the arrow keys on the keyboard to move around the grid. You can add text, formatting, formulas, and functions to cells. If you've ever worked with Microsoft Excel before, or OpenOffice Calc, it's very similar. You can use Google Sheets to manage many aspects of your work or personal life. For example, you could use a spreadsheet like this one to create a budget, calculate progress towards your goals, or to plan a trip. To make your job search easier and clearer, let's customize this spreadsheet so that it tracks the important information about each potential job. First, let's add some headings to keep track of information about jobs that you find in your search. For my sheet, I'm using job name, the company the job is for, salary listed, and the website link to this job listing. It's a good idea to have a notes column too. Just for any additional notes that you may need to remind yourself of regarding that job. Um, it's convenient to have notes as the last column because if you're typing a long sentence and it needs to bleed into other columns, it doesn't cause any problems if it's the last column on the table. Also, if you've just typed something very stupid that you don't want to stay on your spreadsheet, you can press Edit Undo at any point in time and it'll undo the last change that you made to the spreadsheet. Um, the shortcut for that is right here. And there's also a keyboard shortcut you can access by holding the control button on your keyboard and pressing the Z key. If you accidentally went back a little too far, you can also go forward by clicking the redo button. Now, if you have undid something, and then type something new, you can no longer redo the old thing that used to be there. So you'd have to type notes again, in my case. Also, the keyboard shortcut for redo is Control Y. But these are just suggestions. You can make headings for whatever you think will be most helpful in your job search. For example, if you're expanding your search beyond your current area, you might want to add a column for location, or you might want to add a new column called work from home to track whether a job is remote or on site. You may even want to add additional column headings to help compare other information you're interested in, like a job's benefits or perks, or its distance from home. As you proceed with your job search, you'll add details to the spreadsheet to keep track of all the information you need. Now, I've filled out some example jobs on my spreadsheet here, and I just want to show you a few um, tricks you can use for formatting your list. For example, here there's a problem in that this salary is too long to fit into the salary column. So I can fix that very easily. If I put my cursor on that very thin line between C and D, it'll change into this double arrow. And then I can manually drag it out to be a little wider so that entire salary now fits in the column. Or I can just double click on this line and it'll automatically resize that column so that everything in this column fits. Okay. Another trick that you can use is you can color the text of the um, list if you want to. And you can use this to create like a color coded system for yourself. For example, this website right here, or this job I should say, doesn't have a website. So I want to check on that later. It's a little fishy for a job not to have a website but there can be totally legitimate reasons for it. I'll just have to research myself later and see if I can find a phone number, you know, an address of a physical place where this job exists. Make sure it's a real place, not 
some type of scam. Um, so if I want to make this red, so I, I remember to you know check on this later when I'm browsing through my lists, I can select the entire row by clicking on number four here, and it highlights the entire row for me. And you always have to highlight something first before you can make a change to it. Now that it's highlighted, I can click on text color here at the top of the screen. I can pick from any color that I want to listed here. I can also go to custom, which gives me an option to create literally any color that my computer is capable of producing. I'll go with red because red is a good, you know, danger color. So I'll hit okay. And now that color helps that job listing pop out a lot for me. So I'll remember to check on that another day whenever I see that. Now, there are other ways to apply for writing as well. Um, for example, I have used the bold function on the first row here to make my column headings a little bolder. And what the bold button does right here, as you can see, it doesn't really change the size of the font. It really just makes the letters a little thicker. And let's say that there's a job I'm really interested in, like uh, this one right here. There are other ways to highlight it than to just change the color of the font. For example, up here next to font color, there is field color. And what that does is it changes the color of the actual background of the cells. So let's try this this yellow color. There we go. So now I've highlighted that row with a shade of yellow. So again, that's another strong eye catcher. So let's say that's a job that I really want. And so any other jobs that I also really want when I'm looking for jobs, so I can give them that yellow highlight as well. And again, any questionable jobs that I need to maybe do a little you know, follow-up research on, they'll still have this red font. So these are just a few of the many format options available to you, and I hope they help you out when you're organizing your list. Okay, now that you've set up your sheet with some of the things you're looking for, let's search for jobs. Chances are you've already used a digital tool to find new career opportunities. Most employers list new jobs online and manage the entire application process digitally. To help you find new opportunities, we'll use Jobs on Google Search. Jobs on Google Search pulls advertisements from all over the internet and creates one easy list of potential jobs. You can start your job search through a regular Google search. Whether you're following along now or plan to begin your search later, open up a new browser tab on your device. That way you can have your Google search open in one tab and your sheet open in another. And the way that you open a new tab, on most browsers, there's a little plus sign up here called new tab. And that's what you want to click. After typing google.com into the address bar up here and pressing enter, you'll be taken to Google. In the search bar, type in a query about the type of job that you're looking for. You may want to use terms like jobs near me or retail jobs, part-time jobs, or customer service jobs. You can also type questions like, what are the best jobs near me? Add search terms that benefit yourself and you know define the type of jobs you're looking for. For now, I'm going to start pretty simple. I'm going to type in jobs near me again, and I'm going to press enter and see what comes up. As you can see, Google is showing me jobs that are in the Burlington NC area, but if you wanted to do a job search for another city for some reason, you can also do jobs in Greensboro, for example, or jobs in Winston-Salem, NC. Or you can go to other states, of course, jobs 
in I don't know good Florida. So Flagstaff, Arizona. There we go. I don't know any Florida cities off the top of my head, sorry. <laughs> and it would show you jobs there way too, as you can see. But I'm gonna go back to jobs near me. Okay. Your basic Google search will show you a preview of several possible jobs. You can click on these jobs directly if they interest you, or you can select the arrow at the top right to expand your search. To make searching for jobs easier, Google finds listings from all over the internet and collects them in one search result. A snapshot of jobs that meets your search criteria appears on the Google search page. Click a result or click explore jobs to look at the full list. Each listing contains important details about the position, including ways to apply, salary information, a description of the work, reviews of the company, and more. You can read through this information to decide which jobs might be right for you. In the search bar, type in a query about the kind of jobs you're looking for. You may want to use terms like veteran jobs near me, veteran management jobs, and the name of your city, IT jobs for veterans, just to name a few. Once you've run a search query related to veteran jobs, you will be prompted to enter your MOS code. Veterans and military service personnel transitioning back into civilian life can enter their MOS code on job search to help them find civilian jobs and require similar skills to the ones they use in their military roles. Whether you're transitioning to a civilian career or just moving forward with a new job search, your next step is to process your search results. So let's talk about how to narrow your search and make the application process easier. Your search may have returned lots of jobs. To get more specific results, you may want to choose a filter. A filter is a search tool that emphasizes the most relevant results. You can find dozens of filters arranged as clickable tiles at the top of this job search page. You can filter your job search by Job title, location, the date the job was posted, the type of job, or the employer. These filters are pretty straightforward. This filter, Work From Home, allows you to find remote opportunities. Select this filter to see only jobs that allow you to work from home. Let's imagine at this point that you've selected a job that matches your needs. You've read through the job description and you know that you're interested in the position. If you think you might want to apply for the position, but you don't want to do it right now, click Save. This bookmarks the listing so you don't have to search for it again later. At the top of the jobs listing is a tab called Save. Click this tab to see all the jobs that you've saved in the past. This shows all the jobs you saved in one list without the jobs you aren't interested in. You've learned a lot about how to use Google to search for a new job, but the landscape of available jobs is always changing. It's important to check job listings frequently so you don't miss out on opportunities. Employers post new openings all the time, and not on a specific schedule. Performing an internet search every day and sorting through it to find new jobs can take a lot of your time. Time you could be using to write your resume or prepare for interviews. To save on time when searching for job listings, set up email alerts. When you set an alert, you will automatically receive an email about new listings that match your search criteria. To receive emails about your job search, on the lower left of your screen, turn on alerts by clicking the alerts or on for this search button. At this point in your job search, you'll hopefully have found several opportunities and the alerts that you set up will keep you updated about more jobs that become available. You'll probably apply for several jobs and it can be difficult to remember all of the details about each application process. Remember the tracker sheet we set up earlier today? You can use it to keep track of all possible opportunities. As you find jobs that interest you, enter the details into your spreadsheet. You can use the sheet as a hub for all your applications and interviews, and you can easily track the status of any application by glancing at the sheet. Fill out your tracker with potential opportunities as you find them. After you've spent time searching, you can review the sheet to decide which opportunities to apply for, and as you proceed through the application process, you can use the sheet to track every application. Let's continue our job search process. Now that you've created a list of jobs that you're interested in, it's time to work on your resume. Having your resume prepared will streamline your job application process. 
You could begin a resume by opening a blank document and listing your name, contact information, and professional experience, but to make the process faster and easier, let's start off with a template. Templates are like a pattern you use as a guide. They provide design elements and formatting that you can use as a starting point for your projects. They also keep font sizes and styles consistent throughout your document. Google Docs also offers lots of free professional resume templates to get you started. The layout, fonts, and colors are different for each template, but they all contain the same basic information you'll need for your resume, such as your contact information, your skills, your experience, your education, as well as accomplishments or projects that you've completed. After you've selected a template, you can customize the document from there. To access these templates, start from your Google Drive. Click New Google Docs from a template. Rename your template so it's easy to find later. After the workshop, take a look at these templates and think about which one might work the best for you. Some of the templates lend themselves to certain industries. You may want to check with a colleague about standard styles in your field. For example, a creative person like a graphic designer might use a more creative resume template to show off their skills even before the interview. Now let's go take a look at how this looks in action. Okay, so again, to make a resume from template using Google, we are on Google Drive. We are going to go to new Google Docs from template. And then there are several resume templates here already. I'm just going to pick the first one that catches my eye. I'll go with this one. I picked Spearmint. And it's called that because it's got a little green theme going on like Spearmint Green. Okay. And don't forget to change the name of your document to keep a, you know, idea of what it's called. We need to find it later. All right. Once you choose a resume template you want to use, add in your name, contact information, and professional history. And the way that you do this is you select placeholder text. That's what this stuff is right here. And you can just delete it out and type in your name. Donovan A. Um, industrial designer. That's not me. I am a reference librarian. And I'll leave the example address for now. But you get the idea. You would just backspace this information out and then type in your address and your numbers and your information. Same goes for filling out your skills, listing your job experience, and you know if if for the particular job that you're applying for, you've only worked two jobs similar to that in the past, you can delete like this third entry completely. Just go to the end of it and hold the backspace button until it's gone. Just like that. And again, if there are no particular like rewards that you've gotten on the job, you can just delete this section out too. And there you go. And you can, if you want to, you know, change up the font and style of the resume to better fit yourself instead of just leaving it as a template if you want to. So for example, I could change the text to, let's see, let's try Meriwether and see how it looks. Here we go. And I think that looks perfectly fine for a resume. I would not recommend picking um, like comical or funny looking fonts like Comic Sans. It's probably not a great idea. Um, might work if you're planning to, you know, work in the cartooning industry or maybe a babysitter or kindergarten teacher kind of thing. But for your average professional job, I wouldn't recommend that. 
Um, I'd stick with very average professional looking fonts. But make sure they are easy on the eyes. This might be a slight strain to read as it is, so I'll just pick something else. I'll go back to Meriwether in my case. Very easy on the eyes. Good to read. And you don't have to strictly stick to the other little parts of formatting either on the template. For example, if you like these headers to stick out a little more, maybe you could italicize them, underline them. Just an idea. Just make sure that whatever you do to you know one header, you do it to all the other headers because you want to have a sense of, you know, uniformity going on with your style. Might even do it up here. Eh, maybe just that. And you can also make your own sections if you want to, if you have something different in mind from the template. Um, like I'm going to say that I'm an artist of some kind and I have a, I have an art portfolio and I'm going to make this its own section and to indicate that it, it is a section of the resume, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make it match the other section here. So this one, it is font size 14. I'll make this font size 14. It is green, it's bold, italic, and underlined. So I'll make it green. By the way, if there are any colors that are used as part of the template, you can definitely see them down here. Um, because recently used colors are basically listed down here at the bottom under custom. So yeah, you'll find the colors you're looking for here. So that's green. And it was bold, italic, underline. It's also all caps, I just noticed. So I'm going to so I'm going to make it all caps. There are different ways to do this, but I'm just going to type it out to be fast about it. And there we go. I've created a uh, header for this section, as you can see. And then I would type in my art website. And there are different ways to include a website as well. I'm just going to type in example.com and press space or enter works too. And you see it automatically created that to be a, uh, a hyperlink to a website. And if I click on it, you see it will let me go there. Um, now if you save this as a PDF or a Microsoft Word document, hyperlinks work on those types of documents as well. And if I wanted, I could just do it this way instead. I could say click here to view my art online and then I'm going to highlight this. I'm going to click the hyperlink option up here. It looks like a chain link and then I can put it in a website here and hit apply. And now that is a clickable link. And artists, I mean, and whoever's looking at your resume, you know, they might be impressed by this. They might say, hey, this person knows what they're doing. Now, when you're applying to different jobs or different types of jobs, you may want to make a unique version of your resume for each, you know, type of job that you're applying for. So to do that, you can always go to File, like top left, and then make a copy, and you can name the copy of it. 
So I'll name mine Donovan Resume Dash Graphic Design. And it'll go ahead and open that in a new tab. So now I've got two versions of my resume. One's called Donovan Resume Graphic Design. And then the other one is just called Donovan Resume. And maybe this resume is for jobs that uh, don't need to see my art portfolio. So I'm just going to delete that part out. So now I've got the version of my resume that doesn't have the art portfolio. And a version that does. And, you know, you can make different changes as well. Like, if you have different skill sets, you can list them instead. If you have more relevant, you know, job experiences that are good for one job, not good for another, you can, you know, list them here and stuff like that. Maybe my original resume would be more for IT work, for example. Okay. And when you're ready to submit these resumes to job websites or to application websites, you can make copies of it on your computer that you can then upload to these websites. The way that you do that is you can do File, Download, and then you have all these options here. You can save this file as a Microsoft Word document, and then PDF documents. I would say that PDF documents are probably the most widely accepted because people can open these files and look at them even if they don't ha own Microsoft Office. There's also a very convenient option to send the file as an email attachment. And again, go to File, and you click the option Email as Attachment. In the two box, you type in the email address of the person you want to send it to. Subject, I'll leave that as a fine subject but you can change it if you need to. Here you can include a message and the very bottom you can change the file type if you want to. By default they're going to send it as a PDF. Your job search process will be a lot more successful if you get feedback on your materials. To get someone else's input on your resume, share the document with them and to do that, you click the share icon, which is towards the very top right of the screen when you're looking at your Google Doc resume. Enter an email address for the person whose input you want and select what type of access they should have. You can organize different versions of your resume using folders in Google Drive. But to keep track of an individual job search, you can also include a link to each distinct resume in your job search tracker sheet. These individual resumes come in handy when you progress to the interview stage by keeping track of them when you can review the exact resume you sent to refresh your memory on what company already knows about you. And you can use that information to anticipate potential questions. So here is my job sheet again and I'm going to, because I like to keep the notes column as the last column, I'm going to right click on the very top of this column where it says E, I'm going to click insert one left column. Here, I'm going to type resume. And here, I would put links to my resume that I've created that would be best fit for this job. So for, the, for these first two, I'm going to say my graphic design resume is best fit. I'm just going to grab the link right here by clicking it one time. Right click, hit copy. Go back to this tab, and here I'm going to right click and hit paste. And I know that's much longer than the column, but if you hit the enter key, you'll see it doesn't really matter. It's still there in the full length, and I can click it now and go to the resume. Copy, paste. And here I'm going to use the other resume, my IT resume going to grab that and there I've pasted a resume that I can click on for each job that I'm trying to apply to. With current world events, more and more employers are seeking to do 
remote interviews over the internet instead of face-to-face -face interviews in an office building. So we're going to look at some tips that can help you prepare for a digital interview. And a lot of these tips are good for face-to-face -face interviews, really, to be honest. First, when you're speaking with your interviewer, look toward the camera. Depending on the size and shape of your device, your interviewer's face may appear near the bottom of your screen. So if you look directly at their face, it may appear as if you're not making eye contact. To help your interviewers feel like they're getting to know you, keep your eyes up and focus on the camera. Next, even if you're nervous, speak slowly and clearly. Anxiety can make some people speak faster, which can make you harder to hear or understand. Remind yourself to breathe and answer thoughtfully at a slow pace. One way to ensure that your interviewer see you in the best light, pay attention to actual lighting. To look professional, place a warm colored lamp near the back of your computer screen, and consider changing your desktop background to a light color. The extra light reflecting on your face will make you easier to see, and since a lot of our communication is nonverbal, if your interviewer is able to see your face, they will be able to communicate with you more smoothly. As many of us are transitioning to working from home, your office might be a kitchen, a living room, or basement. If you can, find a neutral background to avoid distractions. To shine during a remote interview, dress for the interview, even if you're doing it from your living room. Paying attention to how you present yourself will show your interviewers that you take the opportunity seriously. And a little note here, don't dress from the waist up, okay? You never know, something might happen. Maybe you spill coffee on your lap and you might need to stand up immediately. You don't want to be seen pantsless on camera, okay? No matter how clever you think you are, don't dress just from the waist up, okay? Finally, interviewing is a skill and you'll get better with practice. Ask a colleague or a friend to hold a mock interview with you. And that wraps up today's video. Thanks for watching. We hope you learned a thing or two. And if you did, remember to like and share our content on social media. Thanks, and have a good day. Stay safe.